Hello everyone, in this video we are going to be talking about the two-dimensional uh, Fourier transform. Um, so a Fourier transform is a fairly useful uh, way of representing uh, the uh, spatial frequency information that's contained in an image. Uh, we are going to be making two videos about that. In this first video the goal is really to uh, get uh, a sense of uh, what the 2D uh, Fourier transform uh, represents and uh, how we can uh, look at that information. And then in the next video, I will be um, talking about uh, ways to use the Fourier space uh, to create uh, filters uh, for, for our images. Um, so let's go to the notebook. Um, so in this one, I've already written uh, all the code because the, the goal is really to, 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 uh, to illustrate what the, what the Fourier transform um, does. Um, and the first thing uh, that we need to, 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 to understand is that um, the, 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 the implementation of the Fourier transform that we are using is the one from NumPy, it is the uh, fast Fourier transform. And um, just because of the way it's implemented, if you want to uh, more easily uh, display and understand the information contained in the, in the Fourier transform, we have to uh, always use two uh, different methods uh, when we are doing the, the, the Fourier transform. First, we have to apply the Fourier transform to uh, the image. Then we have to apply a method called uh, FT uh, shift, which will just make sure that the, um, um, that the lower frequencies are where we expect them to be in the, uh, in the image or the, the signal that you want to, to display. And so when we want to do the inverse uh, transform, we have to do the same. We have to first use the inverse FFT shift and then the inverse Fourier transform. So I've created just here quickly some, some uh, helper functions that just do that. Uh, so in for the 2D Fourier transform, for the 1D Fourier transform, and then finally these two methods here are um, taking the Fourier transform and computing the uh, amplitude of the Fourier transform and the phase of the uh, Fourier transform. Since um, the four Fourier, the, the, the Fourier image um, is uh, c c contains uh, complex uh, numbers. So since we have complex numbers, we have an amplitude and a phase uh, that we can look at uh, separately. And we are going to, to, to be looking at uh, what that means. Um, so to to start uh, simple, we can we can start just with a, with a one D uh, signal, just to remind ourselves of what of what uh, Fourier is all about. Um, and what I have here is that I've created just a very simple uh, sinusoid uh, sine uh, signal. Sorry, so a very simple uh, sine here um, with uh, the NumPy uh, sine method, um, and I am uh, computing the Fourier transform, the one D Fourier transform of that uh, signal. And what I will uh, get uh, if I look at the uh, the signal here is uh, just a signal with two peaks um, that are uh, symmetrical uh, from the uh, center of the uh, of the Fourier space here. And the way to interpret this is uh, anything that's uh, right at the at the, the middle here is the, um, the the frequency uh, corresponds to the to the, the, to the um, zero uh, frequency. So anything that is uh, in the, at the middle is basically the uh, average um, the average signal uh, over all the, the, the signal. And then uh, when we have here these two symmetrical peaks, they correspond to the same uh, frequency. So from both direction. Um, and uh, so if we have two peaks here, it corresponds to means that we have one uh, frequency present in the, in, the, in the signal, which is what we have here since we have constructed this signal uh, ourselves. Um, and uh, if we have something that is uh, more going more to the, to the, to the sides, uh, we are going to the uh, higher frequencies. So if I take uh, a higher frequencies, for instance, if I do uh, sign of t here, I, I see that uh, now my frequency is much higher and that my peaks have moved uh, much further away from the uh, center. So this is the, the basic uh, 1D uh, Fourier. I can also do um, the, uh, the, the inverse. So I can start by building um, 
the, the Fourier uh, peaks myself. So if I, ca if I look here, I create um, just an empty signal and I put uh, arbitrarily two peaks um, in it. And I put here, uh, I chose two peaks that are um, again uh, symmetrical from the, from, the, from the middle. And if I compute the inverse Fourier transform, I will get a very simple uh, sign. Okay. Um, I can make things. Uh, uh, again, more um, with a higher frequency by just uh, moving s the, the peaks slightly further apart. And I can start with that also to build uh, more complex uh, signals if I want. So if I, for instance, take a uh, higher frequency and add um, a signal here, I will add a third peak and this will start making my signal uh, more complex. Uh, I can uh, keep going if I want. That, for instance, I had yet another peak, and uh, and I will have something that is uh, even more uh, com complex, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And in theory, with uh, um, with this uh, kind of technique, I can I can reconstruct uh, any sort of uh, periodical signal um, by using the by finding the correct uh, Fourier coefficients. Um, so this is the basics the basic idea in one dimension. Um, and the same thing can be done in uh, two-dimensional signals, so such as an image. So in this case, what I've done is uh, just created a fake um, a 500 by 500 uh, image. And the way that I fill this image is um, by taking, again, just a simple uh, sign uh, signal in one of the dimensions. So uh, all the values along the y-axis will always be the same, but along the, the x-axis, I am following a sign signal that I've just recentered uh, on uh, 127. So it will go from 0 to uh, 255 uh, in uh, following a sign. Uh, and I can um, take the 2D Fourier transform of this uh, signal. And I what I will do here is display the, the fake image uh, and display the amplitude of the uh, Fourier uh, transform. And so I have here my uh, sign along the uh, x-axis. And if I look at the Fourier amplitude, I will see that I have an image that is almost entirely empty except uh, that around the, um, the center I will have, uh, so I, I have a peak uh, right at the center, which will be the, uh, which will encode the, the, the average value um, over the, the, the entire uh, image. And I will have the two symmetrical peaks uh, corresponding to the uh, frequency that I have here. Uh, here I am taking just um, the, uh, the values of this uh, Fourier image uh, along the, um, the row 250, so right at the middle, uh, passing through, through the center here, just to, to look at the kind of the cross section of the Fourier transform. And I see exactly what I uh, just uh, talked about. So the big peak in the middle and the uh, two symmetrical peaks corresponding to the uh, sign uh, signal that I have here. Um, again, I can do the, um, the, the, the reverse uh, exercise. I can create a fake Fourier signal. Um, I, I just um, make sure that I am creating a uh, complex, uh, a complex uh, signal here, a complex image, uh, by just adding 0 uh, j. Um, and I am putting here just uh, one peak, uh, so 250, so it's uh, in, the, in the middle in the y-axis, and 255, so slightly off-center uh, in the um, x-axis. Uh, and I can take the inverse of this and uh, cast it to uh, real by just taking the, the real value. And I will uh, again have the, the same, the same uh, thing here. I just have a, a simple uh, sign. Um, so here I've only put one peak. I, I could uh, have the same signal by uh, um, putting another one, uh, another symmetrical uh, one. It will just change the, the amplitude of, uh, of this uh, sign signal, basically. Um, but I can just fill in one side of the, of the uh, Fourier space if I, if I want to, uh, in this case. Um, so um, this is uh, for a um, very simple signal, but we can, again, use the same technique of 
adding more coefficients to, to start building a more complex signals. So here if I start putting, uh, so I have something on the uh, x-axis, I have one on the y-axis. Let's remove those for the moment. So, and let's put the same uh, coefficient. So if I put one peak uh, slightly of center in the x-axis and one in the uh, y-axis, then I will have this time um, um, uh, uh, both a frequency uh, in the uh, in the y-axis and one in the y in the x-axis, meaning that I have this kind of cross pattern uh, where I have the two sign signals that uh, that make some uh, interference pattern with with uh, each other. Um, if I give a uh, different coefficient, then I will have uh, one of the signals is stronger than the uh, than the uh, other, and that will appear uh, so stronger. And I can also start adding uh, more and more. Um, frequencies uh, in different dimensions and if I start going away from just the um, the kind of the, the cross uh, the middle of the of the image and going in the di on the diagonals uh, then I can start having also frequencies that are not just in the y uh, and x axis but which are uh, uh, diagonals and I can start building uh, basically any complex image that I want by just uh, adding more uh, more frequencies. Of course, it's a bit <laughs> difficult to to uh, to know uh, to to like to build a fake image from a, a, a Fourier um, transform, but uh, that's where you can see really the the, the, the the correspondence that we have between the um, the Fourier signal and the uh, constructed image. Um, so. Um, here I'm showing the uh, Fourier amplitude, but the Fourier signal also has um, a, a phase, and the phase is a lot more difficult to, to interpret, but um, at least to interpret the, the, the signals. If I try to look at the, at the phase here, it will, uh, so here it's a phase signal, so it's not very uh, interesting, but if, I, if you look at a, at, a, at a real image, you will see that um, the, the phase is a very, very uh, noisy uh, looking signal. So here what I'm taking is taking the airplane image, uh, I'm taking the amplitude of the uh, Fourier transform and just I'm putting the uh, log of the amplitude here because uh, the, the peaks are so much higher uh, in the, the values are so much higher in the in the middle here than what we have uh, in, um, in the other parts of the, of the Fourier image. If I just use the, uh, the, the amplitude directly, I will basically see uh, almost nothing. Um, so I'm using the, the logarithm here just to make things more more apparent, and the phase is, as I said, um, completely um, uh, noisy. Um, but uh, the the way that we uh, interpret the phase is simply that well, it's the phase of the uh, sign, and if I change the phase, I will just move the uh, the sign uh, signal around. So if I, uh, for instance, here. Um, start from my, my basic uh, I image. If instead of putting a signal of 1, I put uh, 1 uh, j, so I move from just on the real uh, ax axis, I move to the uh, imaginary axis, um, I will see that I have the same uh, frequency, but now I have just moved my uh, sine um, function uh, around. So it's not super visible, but um, if you look at the, the borders here, you will see that the uh, the signal has moved um, uh, without losing without changing the, uh, the the amplitude. So this is just what the the, um, the phase uh, encodes. So it's where the sign uh, starts on the uh, on the image. Um, so just uh, to to further illustrate that, uh, I can actually. Um, uh, reconstruct uh, an, Im an, an image based on the amplitude in the phase. So um, if I have the amplitude of in the phase of a complex number, I can uh, just do uh, the amplitude times e to the power of the phase times uh, i. Um, and uh, that will give me the, uh, the, complex num the original complex number that uh, created this amplitude in phase. And from that, I can recompute the uh, the inverse Fourier transform. So if I do that from this amplitude and this phase, I get back the original image. And this means that I can now start playing with the, the, the phase and with the amplitude uh, separately. Um, and so for instance, if I um, change the, the phase to, um, to add uh, pi to, uh, to all of the, um, 
to go to ev ev everywhere in the uh, in the image. I see that I have uh, actually uh, inverted here my um, my original image by changing the the phase. Um, if I start adding something uh, more uh, random, so if I completely uh, mess, mess around with the uh, with the phase by just adding a random number to it, I, I see that I'm starting to completely corrupt uh, my uh, my image. And if I just rescale that uh, to to be something between zero and two pi. Uh, so really completely changing now the, the angle, uh, so the phase of my uh, signal. I'm creating something that's no longer recognizable. So the amplitude here of the uh, Fourier, in Fourier space is, is still exactly the same, but I have completely changed the phase and I've made the signal completely uh, impossible to, uh, to, to recover. Um, so uh, generally, we'll not be uh, working a lot with the, with the phase. We'll keep it uh, as is. And as we will see in the next video, in the filters, we will uh, really focus on the uh, amplitude, which contains the, the really uh, um, usable part of the, uh, of, the, of the signal, where we can really see the, the, the patterns of the image uh, uh, appear as, um, as peaks and lines uh, here in, uh, in, in, Fourier, uh, in Fourier space. Uh, so that's it for this video and I will see you in the next one.